All right, let's dive in. Today we're getting into some seriously cool stuff. Um, the villains of the DC universe. Oh yeah, always a fun topic. We've got excerpts from this article all about the most influential bad guys. I mean, what makes these characters tick? It's crazy how much they've shaped, like, not just comics, but storytelling in general. Right. The best villains, they aren't just there to throw punches. No way. They make you think about right and wrong, about power, what it really takes to be a hero. Totally. This article jumps right into that, how a hero is defined by their villains. Makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, like would Superman even be E-Superman without Lex Luthor always scheming in the background? Exactly. Or Batman, I mean, would he be so driven without the Joker's chaos? It's like... They need each other. Kinda. The villains push heroes to their absolute limits, show us their true character. And speaking of character... Oh, you're going somewhere with this. We got to start with a group that's basically the Justice League's twisted mirror image. Okay, you're talking about the crime syndicate of America, right? The CSA. Huh. You got it. A whole world where Superman is the tyrant. Ultraman. Wild concept. It is. But isn't that whole evil twin thing kind of played out? Like, how does this article justify why they matter? It's not just a simple flip like good becomes bad. The crime syndicate, they twist things in such cool ways. Okay, give me an example. All right, so Ultraman. He actually needs kryptonite to survive. It fuels him, but also makes him super volatile. Whoa, so it's not just you that he's the opposite of Superman. His whole motivation, what drives him, it's all warped. You got it. It makes you think about those core ideas in a totally new way. That's actually pretty clever. Yeah. All right, from Twisted Reflections, let's shift gears a bit. To a villain who taps into, like, a super modern fear. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Brainiac, right. Bingo. This article... It calls him the ultimate technological threat. He's given Superman a run for his money, that's for sure. He's this robotic clone obsessed with collecting knowledge, specimens, like a cosmic hoarder, but with a god complex. But why does he resonate with people today? It's not like he's just some big robot throwing punches. Think about it. Brainiac shrinks entire cities. Yeah. Bottles them up. It's like... Our fear of data collection. Exactly. Surveillance, who controls information, who has the power to collect our lives, it's all there. Whoa, I never thought about it that way. It's not just science fiction anymore. It's like super relevant. Right. Okay, from digital fears, let's get physical strategic. This article highlights Bane as a villain who like upped the game. Oh, for sure. Bane wasn't just muscle. He was a mastermind. He studied Batman, every weakness, every move, planned everything out. And that Nightfall storyline breaking Batman's back. Iconic. That became like the blueprint for villains to come. I mean, everyone remembers that image of Bane standing over a broken Batman, but what makes his strategy so different? It's not like other villains just, you know, politely ask Batman to fight before that, right? Uh-huh, right. Bane knew to break Batman, you gotta do it physically A&D mentally. He wore Batman down, pushed him to the edge before that final blow, and modern villains, they learn from that. So it's like they're playing 4D chess while heroes are stuck doing checkers. You got it. They think long term, strategically, yeah. and that makes them so much more dangerous. Okay, from Gotham Streets, let's zoom OUT to like cosmic level threats. The article talks about Darkseid as the ultimate embodiment of that. Darkseid is terrifying. Ruler of Apocalypse, and he's obsessed with this thing called the anti-life equation. So he wants to control everything. Not just actions, mm -hmm. thoughts. It's that primal fear, losing free will, complete control. And it's not just a DC thing either. Oh, right. Like Thanos from Marvel. That fear of one entity controlling everything, it taps into something deep. Definitely. It's that classic struggle, order versus chaos, but on a huge scale. Okay. From one icon to another, let's talk Sinestro. Oh, Sinestro. The fallen Green Lantern. His story, it's all about that gray area, hero to villain. Right. He thinks he's doing good but he's blinded by his own need for control. It's a classic cautionary tale. Good intentions gone wrong. Almost Shakespearean, right? Yeah. Sinestro's fall, it reminds us that line between hero and villain. Mm. It can be really thin. Yeah, for sure. And another villain who blurs that line, at least sometimes, Deathstroke. Ah, yes. The article calls him like the archetype for the skilled, ruthless mercenary. Working in the shadows, those jobs that are kind of good, kind of bad. He's got that whole cool, dangerous vibe going on. But what makes him different from all the other assassins in DC? Deathstroke is the ultimate professional, not driven by some big idea or revenge. It's pure efficiency, cold and calculated. That makes him reliable, but 
terrifying. You never know whose side he's really on. Exactly, he's the wild card. Huh? But even Deathstroke, his ruthlessness, it's nothing compared to the Joker. Pure chaos. Batman's ultimate nemesis, but his motives. They're a mystery, even to Batman himself. The Joker is chaos personified. Unpredictable, absurd. Yeah. He disrupts everything. Just leaves madness and destruction. It's like trying to reason with a hurricane, right? You just can't. It's almost contagious, his brand of crazy. Oh, absolutely. Even other villains are wary of him. He disrupts everything, even the established order of villainy. So he makes you think about, like, what even I sanity or order? Right. And that unpredictability, that's what makes him truly dangerous. Okay, last but not least, we have Lex Luthor, Superman's arch nemesis. The article talks about how when they reimagined him as this powerful business tycoon, it added a whole new layer to being bad. Lex is fascinating because he represents how corrupt even the most legit things can be. Not some costumed weirdo. He's a businessman, philanthropist. But underneath it all. Ruthless ambition. He's the wolf in sheep's clothing, but on a global scale. Exactly. It reminds us evil doesn't always wear a mask. Sometimes it's wearing a suit and tie. So Lex shows us that power, even the legal kind. It can corrupt just as much as superpowers. He's like a warning sign about what happens when you want control too much. Absolutely. It's a powerful message. Okay, we've covered a lot here. From the crime syndicate's messed up morals to Brainiac tapping into digital anxieties and Lex Luthor being, well, Lex Luthor. It's amazing how diverse these villains are. Yeah. And it shows how DC Comics just endures. I really have. These villains, they've got complex reasons for doing what they do, different perspectives, and they've made the DC universe so much richer. They keep readers and viewers thinking too about good and evil, all that. It's not simple. Not at all. And there's one villain whose motivations are even more complex. I mean, huh? he's not trying to rule the world or just destroy his enemies. Oh, he's got something else in mind. He genuinely believes he's helping his arch nemesis, the Flash, become a better hero by torturing him. Well, hold on, that's that's Zoom, right? You got it. His logic is so twisted. Does the article really try to say he's not just like a sadist? It's where things get really interesting. Zoom, he's like a case study in how to be a villain. Yeah. I mean, he really thinks he's doing good. That's suffering, it makes heroes stronger. Okay, but torturing the Flash, making him relive his worst moments, that's not exactly what I'd call heroic. Right, but that's what the article points out, how Zoom twists the whole idea of growth. He's fixated on heroes overcoming adversity. But he's the one causing the adversity. Exactly. He ignores the emotional, ethical side of things completely. It's like mentorship gone wrong. So it's not just power or wanting to see the world burn. It's this messed up philosophy he's trying to force on the Flash. Yeah. And that makes him so interesting to think about. He makes us ask, how far is too far when you're pushing someone? When does a challenge become just plain cruelty. That's the question. And it's relevant to, like, real life, too, not just superheroes. Yeah, we all face tough stuff. But how we deal with it, how we treat others, that's what matters. Exactly. And that's why these villains, even when they're disturbing, they're so important to these stories. They hold up a mirror to us, make us question what we believe. Right. Speaking of questioning things, let's switch gears for a bit. Talk about a villain whose motives are, well, simpler, at least on the surface. Okay, you thinking Deathstroke. The mercenary. You got it. He's all about getting the job done no matter how messy. Pure, ruthless efficiency. Like a machine. No feelings, no regrets. But the article mentions he sometimes acts like an anti-hero. How does that fit? It's what makes him so complex. He has his own code, even if it's kind of twisted. Loyal to people he respects. Strong sense of justice. Even if it means breaking the law. Sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's not just a killing machine, you know? There's a little bit of good in there somewhere. Exactly. That's why he's so interesting. Challenges what we think a villain is. Shows us even the worst people can have good moments. Like that saying, a little bit of good in the worst of us, a little bit of bad in the best of us. Deathstroke is, like, the perfect example. He really is, and that's why he sticks with us, mm -hmm. you know? He reminds us the world isn't black and white. It's those shades of gray where the good stories are. And speaking of gray areas... We got ATA talk about the Joker. He's chaos, but like personified. Oh, absolutely. Batman's biggest enemy, but no one really knows what makes him tick. The Joker, he's a force of nature, all about the unpredictable, the absurd. He disrupts everything, leaves madness and destruction wherever he goes. Like a walking, talking embodiment of entropy. He just wants to watch the world burn, right? Not necessarily. 
The article, it argues that he's not just nihilistic. He's not trying to destroy everything. So what then? He wants to expose, like, the hypocrisy of it all. Show us that under all the rules, all the civilization, there's this primal chaos. So he's like a social commentator, but using crazy stunts and violence to make his point. Yeah. He's a mirror showing us the darkness inside us all. That potential for chaos, it's in everyone. Okay, that's a pretty disturbing thought, but also kind of fascinating. Like, if we just suppress all our bad impulses, yeah. are we all just one bad day from being the Joker? Right. That's what he makes us think about. And that's why he's such a terrifying villain. That line between sane and insane, order and chaos, Yeah. it's thin. He's like a walking Rorschach test, reflecting all our anxieties back at us. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to our last villain today. Lex Luthor. Oh, Lex. Superman's arch enemy. The article talks about how when they made him this big business guy, it took his villainy to another level. He went from mad scientist to evil CEO, basically. Exactly. And that makes him even more scary, I think. He's the ultimate wolf in sheep's clothing. It uses his money, his influence, to get what he wants. No matter who gets hurt. He's the poster boy for what happens when ambition goes unchecked. That hunger for power, it can corrupt anyone. Like that saying, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Lex Luthor is living proof. And what's even scarier, he thinks he's doing the right thing. Wait, so he's not just power hungry, he's delusional too. Thinks he's the hero of the story. That's the scariest part. He's convinced he knows best, and that makes him so dangerous. It's like he's the ultimate narcissist, right? Projecting all his own stuff onto the world. Can't stand that someone like Superman can be genuinely good. Exactly. His villainy, it comes from inside him. He's a reflection of how even the best of us, the smartest, most successful, we can all be corrupted. So we've gone from Zoom's messed up philosophy to the Joker's pure chaos, and now Lex Luthor, who's corrupt to the core. It's amazing how different they all are, but they've all shaped the DC universe, made the heroes who they are. It's like a hero is only as good as their villains. These guys, they've given us some of the most memorable stories ever. But one thing that sticks out to me, a lot of these villains, they have a tragic side too. Oh, you're right. It's not like they're just evil for the sake of it. Yeah, like Mr. Freeze. He's trying to save his wife who's cryogenically frozen. You kind of feel for him even when he's doing bad things. That's good storytelling. Even the worst characters, they're still human, capable of awful stuff. But maybe, just maybe, they can change. Like, we're seeing both sides, good and bad, in all these villains, and maybe in ourselves too. But hey, before we get too deep here, uh -huh, right. what are some of the biggest takeaways for you from this whole deep dive? It really makes you think, you know, how these villains have changed over time. Yeah, like they reflect what people were afraid of, fascinated by, all that. Right. Like Lex Luthor, he's gone from mad scientist to this corporate tycoon. It's how we see power and corruption, depending on the time period. And the article makes a good point about how villains force heroes to face some, like, uncomfortable truths. Oh, yeah. About themselves, about the world. Yeah. It's not always good guys versus bad guys. It's more complicated. And today, we've definitely seen that. Zoom's logic, Sinestro's fall from grace. They're not just bad for the sake of being bad. They've got reasons, their own sense of right and wrong, even if it's twisted. And that's what makes them so interesting. Yeah, I think that's a big takeaway. Villains, they aren't just obstacles, you know? They push heroes to change, to grow. It's part of how the hero becomes who they are. They make the hero question things, their beliefs, their limits. And sometimes the hero has to make tough choices, ones that really test their morals makes the stories way more interesting for us. You know, we see ourselves in those struggles. Absolutely. But we've talked about all the serious stuff. I think it's worth saying, these villains, they can be fun too. Oh, for sure. They gotta be entertaining or nobody would care. Like the Joker, he's just so chaotic. Or Harley Quinn, she's got that mischievous thing going on. They bring this energy to DC, you know? It's a little scary, a little fun. It's like a roller coaster. You're on edge, but you also kind of can't wait to see what crazy thing they'll do next. Exactly. Darkness and humor, danger and fun. Yeah. That's what makes a good villain. We love to hate them, but we can't look away. So wrapping up our deep dive here, the article we talked about, it focused on some classic DC villains. The all-time greats. But it made me think, there's always room for NW villains, new stories. And that's where you come in. Hmm. What kind of villain would you create? What would make them stand out? What would drive them? Power. Revenge some messed up sense of justice. What kind of danger would they bring to the heroes, the world, yeah. everything? It's something to think about. 
What kind of darkness would you unleash? Until next time, keep exploring that dark side and never stop questioning good versus evil.